In the fiercely competitive corporate world, takeovers are often compared to big fish gobbling smaller ones. In the same way, businesses buy one another to grow fast and dominate their environment. These sharks are efficient predators thanks to evolution, but executives and investors rely on statistics to judge whether takeovers make sense. So how does it all work? Let's start with deal values. Bankers chuck these around like confetti. But what are they talking about? Most of the time, it's the cost of the equity or shares that an acquirer needs to buy to get control of another company. That's an easy sum. It's the number of shares multiplied by the price per share that's offered by the acquirer. But most companies have some debt, which the acquirer will need to shoulder. Add that on and you get to what's called the enterprise value. Occasionally, bankers even add on synergies, jargon for cost savings that they hope combining two companies will create. But that's boastful and inaccurate, because it involves double counting, and you can't know what those savings will be in advance. What's a sensible price to pay for a takeover? There's no right answer to that. The acquirer doesn't want to overpay, and investors in the target want to get a good price. Usually the bidder is going to have to pay more than the shares ordinarily trade for on a stock market. That's called the control premium and will be around 10 to 30 percent. If the acquirer is bidding when the shares are low, they may measure the control premium from that point. That'll make the offer look generous. But it's a lot fairer to use the three-month average share price as your starting point. It all gets a bit more complicated when acquirers offer their own shares as well as cash. The idea is that investors in the target will have the chance to participate in the success of the combined group. The shares in the acquirer will rise and fall depending on how the market feels about the deal, which doesn't happen with cash. As a result, the value of the takeover offer will fluctuate. How does the bidder know what to pay? Usually, it will estimate the profits it hopes to get from the target company over several years, knocking off the bid price and something for uncertainty. Fancy formulae give this kind of guesswork spurious authority. Some bosses make acquisitions just because they're bored and want to run bigger organisations, like the Sharks, they're hungry, but they end up overpaying and their shareholders are poorer as a result. In takeovers, more often than not, the real winners are investors in the target businesses. Jonathan Guthrie, Financial Times, London.